the 79th Psalm. We're going to take a break from going through the book of Ephesians this morning. We finished up our series last week right at home. We'll have about a transition message. Uh, and then we will finish up our series um, preaching about the armor of God. And what a great way to finish the year. And uh, looking forward to finishing Ephesians chapter 6 together. But on this occasion of Thanksgiving, I thought it would be appropriate for us this Sunday morning to spend some time preaching about all that we have to be thankful for in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to see some visitors here and people that are, maybe you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, and uh, you are our guest. We're so glad that you're here with us on this morning, and at the conclusion of this service, my wife and I would love the opportunity to be able to meet you, and uh, we have a, a gift for you um, as well. Like I said earlier, good to have all our extended friends and family home uh, during this time. Thanksgiving has to be has to be one of the best holidays. I mean, it has to really be one of the most Christian holidays that we have. Uh, I, I would say, uh, ev even in the sense of some of our traditional Christian holidays that have been really turned out, been turned over to materialism and paganism and, and different things that have just invaded and corrupted uh, even the good parts of that. But in Thanksgiving, it is good that a people may be thankful to God for his blessings in their life. You know, Thanksgiving attributes will. It tri attributes the idea that someone or something has done something for you beyond yourself. And so there is, in a, in a sense, a, an acknowledgement of thanksgiving that God, and, and from our biblical perspective, that God has done something for us that was beyond what we deserved, it was beyond what we've even expected, and yet because His grace is abundant and overflowing, we have so much to be thankful for. Beloved, your thanksgiving is not dependent upon your circumstances. Your thanksgiving is dependent on your perspective of who God is. That's where thanksgiving originates. Thanksgiving is not about your bank account. It's not about your, necessarily even your relationships, but rather an idea or, or an understanding of who God is and an acknowledgement of all that he has done in our lives. Beloved, because God is great, we have so much to be thankful for. That's where Thanksgiving begins, with who we believe God is. And the psalmist here in Psalm 79 and verse 13 verbalizes it like this. Psalm 79 and verse 13, the Bible says this, So we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We'll give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Simple title this morning, Giving Thanks. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you would help us this time of year, Lord, particularly to have thankful hearts. Lord, I pray that this morning we would be able to see truly how rich in Christ we are. Lord, that we would have so much to be thankful for. Lord, our thankfulness is not an ignoring of our difficult circumstances or, or things that are hindering us or besetting us. But Lord, our thankfulness, Lord, let it be rooted in who we believe you are, who you say you are, Lord, and what we believe about you. Lord, I pray you would help us to truly have thankful hearts this morning. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll notice that this psalm is titled as a psalm of Asaph. And particularly when you are looking in the psalms, the, the headings, now most of you have a study Bible or have a Bible that has different chapter divisions in there. And so it kind of gives you an outline or a little bit of a description of what you're about to read. Those things are not part of the preserved text. Those aren't the Bible. That was Mr. Ryrie's or Mr. Schofield's idea about how to break down that particular text. But, but here in the Psalms, there are titles and there are instructions that give an identifier of who wrote the Psalm or the instructions on how to present or how to participate in the singing of the Psalm that are part of the inspired text, that are part of the preserved text per se here. And we understand that this Psalm here is a Psalm of Asaph. Now the reason I point that out is we sometimes do not really get from the Psalms what we ought to get by always attributing every single one of them to David or, or David at a particular point in his life. And so there is context that can be discerned as we read these Psalms. Psalm, this particular Psalm is attributed to Asaph. There were three 
Asaphs in the Bible, but in this particular one, there's a section of Psalms here that are, that are attributed to him. And Mr. Spurgeon uh, kind of denotes him as the national poet of Israel. The, the national poet. In other words, he had a musical or had a congregational responsibility of leading the nation and leading these psalms. And perhaps this was a psalm he had heard before and he was the instructor or the teacher of it, but it's attributed to him. But there is this idea of a, a national poetry of prayer and thanksgiving towards God. I always get so encouraged when I hear that the Lord gives people thoughts and reflections about him. That there are, there are folks that spend their time reflecting and thinking about God. Now understand this, what God may inspire in your crafting table is not the same type of inspiration that God gave in the Word of God. And yet these are holy thoughts uh, that, that, you, that the Lord might inspire, that you might write or you might pen. And so here, according to the, 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 the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we have Asaph that writes this psalm in Psalm 79. In verses 1 through 4, he addresses the problem, and really begins to set a little bit of context of why this psalm was written. We understand here it's probably written during the, the Babylonian captivity, while the Babylonian captivity was taking place. The temple in Jerusalem were, were being sacked, according to verse number one. The people were being killed and being left for the birds to eat. And so this was a psalm of crying out to God of the state that they found themselves in. The next couple of verses are verses 5 through 12. The, the body of the psalm is, is Asaph's plea or this national prayer for God's help. God, would you help us? Would you remember us? Would you not forget your covenant and your promises towards us? But then when you get to verse 13 in this psalm of our text this morning, so we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We'll sh we'll sh we will show forth thy praise to all generations. Asaph ends this psalm by leading the nation in a promise of commitment towards God. And so what's happening is, here's a problem. We're in, we're in turmoil and, and tribulation. We recognize that this turmoil and tribulation is the result of us abandoning you, God. Would you be faithful and return us back? Would you remove us from this captivity? Would you remove us from this bondage or this oppression? And our response to God getting back right, will, back right with you will be thanksgiving in our hearts unto every single generation. You know what he's saying here? He says, we will never forget to not be thankful anymore. God, forgive us for not being thankful. And they had forgotten their thanksgivings towards God, and now their lives reflected that, and they were paying the price. And they said, God, we will not make that mistake ever again. We want to be thankful. Their disobedience as a nation resulted in their lack of thankfulness. Beloved, think about this in your own life. Disobedience will result in lack of thankfulness. Thankfulness is kind of the, the first thing that goes. You don't have a, a thankful heart anymore. You don't have an appreciative heart. You have a, a complaining or a griping heart, a, a heart that, that, that cannot see God's blessings, but it can only see your needs and wants and, and the things that you are lacking of. Beloved, if you find yourself here this morning without a thankful heart, then understand this, that that is the result of disobedience in your life somewhere. Find it. Root it out. Man, I'm really having a hard time being thankful. Well, I, I bet you along with that statement, there would be some self-analysis of saying, there's some areas in my life that I'm just not being obedient to God in. I'm not being obedient in my actions. I'm not being obedient in my thoughts. I'm not being obedient in my habits. Their restoration would be the result of their return to a heart of thankfulness. How do I get myself out of this hole? How, how do I get myself 
out of this spiritual funk? How, how, how do I begin the process of turning back towards God, following after God, being obedient of God, and truly enjoying the blessings and providences of God? Beloved, that begins by taking the first step of thankfulness. You begin to thank God for the things that he has done in your life. Mr. Spurgeon said it this way, I think that it is better, it's a better thing than thanksgiving, but to have thanks living. To live our lives in such a way that is conscious of a thankful life before God. But you are thanks living when you are able to give thanks for the shepherd, the sheepfold, and for being a sheep. Notice here, the psalmist, the children of Israel find themselves suffering the, the consequences of some very adult decisions. What, what do I mean by adult decisions? You, you kind of get in that spot, and a young person gets in that spot in their life where they think that they know better. They, they think they have it figured out. They think they can get outside of the wisdom and instruction of their parents, and so they go off and do their own things, and because of their age, and now because they're upper teenagers or because they're young adults, they begin to have to suffer the consequences as an adult, adult decisions. And so adult decisions demand adult consequences. And so it's one thing when a child is disobedient, but it's another thing when a 20-year-old is disobedient. I'm amazed, and some of you might be keep, keep up with sports. We had these fellas from UCLA go over, uh, over into China, and they, they, they shoplifted some Louis Vuitton sunglasses. I mean, glasses. I mean, these are expensive sunglasses, and everyone's attributing them. Well, listen, those are just kids being kids. Come on. I mean, can they? No, no, no. Those were adults making adult decisions, and they didn't understand that in that country they weren't as uh, – as nice or as forgiving to those type of adult decisions as we are in this country uh, about that. And, and so now they were having to suffer the consequences of that. And so notice here, the children of Israel thought they could do it on their own. They thought they could, could live outside of God's wisdom and God's instructions. And now they're suffering some very real adult decisions and consequences of doing it on their own. But then notice this. Notice the desire at the end of this psalm. Oh, just to be a sheep again. God, just to be a sheep. We don't want to be an adult anymore. We don't want to be outside of your pastor, outside of your wisdom, making our own decisions, going our own way. Lord, it was so much better when we were just a sheep in your pasture. And this is where they begin to take some thankfulness. And, and so Asaph leads them in saying, listen, let's be thankful for being a sheep in his pasture. Notice what the Bible says here. So we, thy people, and the sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Beloved, I wonder this morning if we would return and as the kids say it nowadays, stop adulting for a second. <laughs> Spiritually. I say, Lord, oh, just to be a sheep in your pasture. That, that's what I want to be thankful for. That's the place that I want to live my life. That's, that's the spot where I want to be, where I know I will be the most content. That's the spot where I know I will prosper the most. Lord, that is the spot that I want to return to. And the way I will return there is by being thankful for being that sheep. First of all, always give thanks for, the, for your shepherd, your Christ. If you're a sheep in his pasture, and that's what you desire to be, and that's what we are wanting to give him thanks for, then first of all, that we ought to always give thanks. You ought to always give thanks for your shepherd, your Christ. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. They understood that they were right with God when they could give thanks to God for him being their shepherd. 
Beloved, can you thank him for being your shepherd this morning? Now, we're not talking about a sentimental assumption that you put on a piece of barn wood on your house, on your living room walls. The Lord is my shepherd. But rather a willingness, rather a thankful willingness to be shepherded by Christ. See, if he is our shepherd, then we must allow him to shepherd. If he is our shepherd, then if we are thankful that he is our shepherd, and we say, you know what, I'm going to be thankful because Christ, my shepherd, is in my life, then, beloved, that thankfulness results in a, a, a willingness to allow him to shepherd us, to lead us, to do his shepherding work, to play the role of shepherd in our lives that produces real results. And what are these results that Christ the shepherd produces in our lives? We become thankful for his presence. We, get, we become thankful for his presence. The disobedient child, or the errant employee, is never thankful for the presence of his master or of his parent. And nor is the disobedient sheep. The, the sheep that is in the mire, that is in the muck, is not comforted by the presence of his shepherd. But it is the thankful sheep. The sheep that is grateful that is grateful for the shepherding of his Christ in his life, that has a thankfulness of his presence, his presence that calms our fears. David went on to say in Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Beloved, are you thankful for his comforting presence that calms our fears? Not sentimentally, genuinely, genuinely, does Jesus, does the shepherd, does his shepherding work truly, is it truly a balm or a solve for the fears in your life? This morning I was walking into my office and took a drink of something, and all of a sudden had excruciating molar pain. I, had a, I have, I have a, a tooth that I need to get worked on. And, and I've had this before, but this literally almost dropped me. I never, I never hurt this bad in my mouth before. And Sister Pat was back there making coffee, and I could barely get three words out there. And I went, and I was yearning for something that would work to take the pain away, to something that would, would mask it. And so I, I, I kept thinking to myself, i got to get to the office. There's a bottle of Tylenol in there. Take twice what it says. And then just hope, you know, pray, God, I got to preach. And so I went in there, I got the Tylenol, I took four of them, I went over there, and I put these in my mouth, and I'm telling you, my, my head was just throbbing. And it, I didn't know if it was working or not. I was hunched over by trash can. I thought I was going to lose breakfast. Brother Phil came and knocked it on my door, and I was like, oh, Lord, I can't handle anything right now. Not that it was, I didn't know it was Brother Phil when he knocked. <laughs> Someone knocked at my door. Someone knocked at my door. <laughs> didn't mean it that way. Knocked on my door. Comes in. I'm in prayer, Lord, I got to preach. I, I was almost to the point where I was thinking, I got to call in, I got to ask someone to preach for me. I'm not going to be able to. Josh is out of town, Pastor Levesque's out of town this week, Brother Mike running around, getting everything ready. So he came in, and the Lord had put something on Brother Phil's heart. And he came in, and he shared that with me and, and whatnot. It was fitly right at the right moment, not even because of my tooth pain, but because of other things and, uh, and, and all these other things. And I thought, Lord, man, look how good you are. In other words, Lord, the, the cry to you to calm a pain or a fear, you really are the antidote to that. In other words, it wasn't sent to me. You really do that. You, you literally, literally send people right to the door, right at the right moment, to, to say right the right things, to put your mind right back in the right place that it needs to be able to do the work that the Lord has for us to do. And beloved, those that are thankful for the shepherd are thankful for him because his presence truly does calm their fears. Have you ever met those folks that are just inconsolable? 
I mean, there's nothing. You can read them every Bible verse. You can tell them every biblical truth. You can, you can relate to them every promise of God, and yet there is no relief. There is no comfort. There is no soothing. And beloved, that is an individual who cannot say, I am thankful that he is my shepherd because of his presence. But we can come in this time of thanksgiving and be, you know, Lord, your presence does comfort me. And I'm so thankful for that. Or I, there are times where I am troubled. There are times where the world is spinning around me. There are times where everything seems to go out of control. Lo, there are times that I am walking through the very valley of the shadow of death, but your presence there comforts me. Can you be thankful for that this morning? I mean, do you know that? Have you experienced that? Oh, what a thing to be thankful for. Not only thankful for his presence, as the, the, his shepherding work in his presence, but also in his protection. The psalmist David went on to say, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff were the, the instruments of the shepherd. They, they were a deterrent to the wolves, the enemies. It was with the rod and the staff that the shepherd could, could fend off the attackers. But more than they were a deterrent to the enemies, which the sheep ought to take comfort that the Lord has a rod and his staff in his hand. And beloved, don't worry. The Bible says that as the word of God proceedeth out of his mouth as a sharp sword and none of his enemies can stand before him, we ought to be thankful for the protection that Jesus Christ gives us over our enemies because there is no enemy that can stand before Jesus. His word is that powerful. His presence is that powerful. When we walk with him and when we are in, when we are sheep in his pasture, we are thankful not only for his presence, but we are thankful for his protection. I mean, think about that. I mean, are you thankful? You think about this Thanksgiving season when, when the world would tell us and advertise to us and Black Friday for us all the things that we should not be thankful, that, that we don't have, therefore we can't be thankful for it, so go buy it so you can be thankful Yet us, we would say, no, 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 Thanksgiving begins right now because I'm thankful for the shepherd's presence, but I'm also thankful for the shepherd's protection. Has he protected you this year? I mean, can you think of there are times that the only explanation is Jesus protected me? Mm. Thy rod and thy staff. His ability to protect us is a source of thanksgiving. But those same rod and staff, they are not only a deterrent to the wolves, but they are also a discipline to the sheep. Actually, he uses them more often for that. The, the, the shepherd more often uses the rod and the staff so as to discipline or correct or corral or guide his sheep more often than he uses them to deter the wolves. And so there's a part of us that takes pleasure or takes thanksgiving and understanding that Jesus protects us from our enemies. But beloved, what you ought to be more thankful for this morning and in this season of thanksgiving is not simply that Jesus protects you from your enemies, is that Jesus protects you from yourself. Mm. Thy rod, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Why? Because while I am under their authority, Lord, you don't let me get away with it. You don't let me wander off too far. Have, have you, how many of you, and just answer this rhetorically, not out loud, but, but how many of you would think in your heart, you know, I am that type of person that seems like I can't get away with anything because I'm the one that always gets caught. Now, now listen, sometimes that gets annoying. You're like, man, why do I always got to be the one that gets caught? I mean, everyone else seems to get away with it, and then as soon as I do it, for one second, boom, I'm caught. But a sheep is thankful for that. Lord, thank you that in my worst moments, Lord, when, when I eye that pasture that is outside of the perimeter, outside of, of the, the, the line that you've given for me, and I wander off, Lord, thank you that you do not lose me. Thank you that you do not allow me just to go off on my own, but thy rod and thy staff will guide me back, sometimes with a hook to bring me back and sometimes with a good knock on the head to make me think straight again. And I wonder, uh, this Thanksgiving season, if we would not spend some time saying, Lord, thank you. 
thank you for hitting me on the head when I was hard-headed. You know, there was a couple times this year, Lord, where I determined to do it on my own, and yet you, thy rod and thy staff, they were a comfort to me. Uh, Maybe you would even say, Lord, thank you that there was times when I was thinking wrong, and yet your word corrected me before I even had an opportunity to act upon them. That's what daily in the word will do for you. Thy rod and thy staff. And so the, the, we can always give thanks for your shepherd, your Christ, because of his presence and his protection. Thanks living is his presence and protection really meaning something in your life. But secondly, not only giving thanks for, our Christ, for your Christ, but always giving thanks for your sheepfold, your church. Giving thanks for your church. Notice what the psalmist says here in verse 13, the, the sheep of thy pasture. In other words, there's an acknowledgement. There are other pastors. And I don't, I'm not saying pastors. I got my phonetical speech impediments that y'all deal with. And my making up of words. I understand I do that sometimes. And my gross mispronunciation of words. There's actually a couple of you that are keeping a list. <coughs> The Hall of Fame. Just know I've gotten rid of irregardless. <laughs> I was corrected on that one time. <clears throat> Talking about the pasture, the, where, where they were grazing. Notice what they say here. Back in yours. There are pastures out there, but Lord, we want to be in your pasture. That's where we want to be. Psalm 23 and verse 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He gave them a place to belong. Somewhere, somewhere they were to be and to be a part of. See, that's what it was to be a sheep in God's pasture, to be one of God's sheep. They, were, they had somewhere to be. And they had, so, they had a flock to be a part of. And they had something to do. In other words, when that flock moved, they got to move with that flock. And when that flock was lied down by these green pastures, they were able to lie down there. And when that flock was fed by these still waters or, or, or nourished by these still waters, they were able to go there. And so the sheep of Israel deter- understood that they had an identity by the flock in which they were communing with, congregating with, a part of. And beloved, there's a thankfulness that we ought to have not only for not only for Christ as our shepherd, but we also ought to have a thankfulness for the Lord for this institution of the local New Testament church and having an opportunity to be part of a sheepfold, to be part of something. God provides a local church as a place to be to belong. Beloved, that you belong somewhere. That that there's a place that has a seat for you and and, and an opportunity for saying, you know what, we want you to belong here. Now, now, praise the Lord, we're going to, we're going to, this year is the end of the year, we're going to give some reports, and the Lord once again has blessed us with new members and new folks that are coming and uh, and that are being a part officially of our church family here. And one of the things that, 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 that I think does so much it's an encouragement to me and an encouragement to our folks that have been here for years and years and years is when a person says, you know what, this is the place where I belong. This is the place where I belong. This is, this is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle in. This, this is, uh, in other words, every believer ought to be part of a local New Testament church. And while I will readily acknowledge that we are not the only local New Testament church uh, in the world or in the United States or even in Shiawassee County, I do think we are a great local New Testament church. And that a person would say, you know what, this is where I'm going to be. There ought to be a thankfulness of sheep of where they belong and where they are a part of, that they have a pasture, not pastor, a pasture to graze upon. These, in this psalm, he maketh the sheep of thy pasture. But praise, beloved, praise the Lord that God gives us a place. Praise the Lord that God gives us a congregation. Now listen. 
not gives me a congregation. You, we are his bride. I'm simply fulfilling the role that he has called me to, just as you are fulfilling the role that God has called you to, and that we are a body fitly joined together. But beloved, well, there ought to be in our hearts a sense of thanksgiving to be part of a body. Okay, thank you. That I get to be part of a church. Think about that. That I get to be part of a church. What a wonderful blessing. Well, what a wonderful blessing that there are folks and there's a, a congregation that would say, yes, we want you. And we want you to be a part. And we want you to have a, a place of belonging. Sheep of thy pastor. Not only a place of belonging or a pasture to 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 reside, but also a place of provision. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The place of nourishment. Not only did he give them a place to belong, and this is what's the thing that they would be thankful for, but he also gave them a place in which they would be nourished. Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Peter would go on to write by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 1, And the elders which are among you I exhort, who I am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Beloved, praise the Lord that we have a place, not only where we can belong, but praise the Lord that we have a place where we are also also fed where there is the, the, the diet of God's word and where God's word is preached and where God's word is uh, is is um is um prepared and where God's word is proclaimed and where God's word can be received and where a believer can go and can be spiritually nourished beloved are you thankful for a place I mean, are you thankful for a sheepfold? Are you thankful for a table that you belong to? I mean, it's his table, and we are his table companions, but we are table companions together with him. And as we've been preaching through the book of Ephesians, I've been thinking about being rich in Christ. Not only should we be thankful for our relationship with Jesus, but we should also be thankful because of a byproduct of that relationship with Jesus, that Jesus put us in a sheepfold, put us in a flock, put us in a place, in a place where someone knows your name, in a place where, where someone notices when you're not around. In a place where there is care and concern and prayer and provisions that are offered. And a place, most importantly, that you can be spiritually fed and nourished. We have to be careful that we do not become so rich and become so fat that we no longer appreciate what it is that God provides for us. He has provided his word and he has provided an institution and he has provided the personnel and he has provided a place that his word can be preached and that it can be received as spiritual food. Thanks living is his sheepfold. Thanks living is being thankful for his sheepfold. Truly having a special place in your life. But lastly, not only always giving thanks for the sheepfold of your church, but always giving thanks for being a sheep, your calling. Remember how we began here at the beginning? They weren't acting like sheep before. I mean, they, they, they were acting like uh, uh, crazy sheep, or they were acting like a, 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 a sheep that were errant on their own, but now... In this desire to be back right with God, they wanted, listen, oh Lord, that we would just be your sheep. 
That's what we want to be. Nothing more, nothing less, just one of your sheep. And but that we that God, we ought to be thankful that God allows us to just be a sheep. To be one of his. To, to, be, to be one of his that he claims as his own. To be one of his that he tells us who and what we are. You know, the world is rife with trying to create for you an identity. And yet your identity is found in Christ. You're just a sheep. A sheep who has a shepherd. A sheep who has a sheepfold. But a sheep as well that has an identity in Christ. Well, what is this identity? Well, he says his sheep are priests. Peter said it, that you're a royal priesthood. The revelator, John, said, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And blessed in, uh, uh, Revelation 20 and verse 6, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, and on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. What do we mean by this? A priest is one, a sheep that has access to the shepherd without an intermediary. Jesus is the one mediator between man and God. And you have access to him. See, you're a sheep. But you have a shepherd and you have a sheepfold and you're a sheep in such a way that you're able to go to the shepherd and you're able to have access to the shepherd. Beloved, because you are a sheep, you are not a lone wolf. (laughs) But rather, you have access to God himself. Oh, what a thing to be thankful for. I mean, what a thing to be thankful for that on Thursday as we gather around our Thanksgiving tables and as we offer a prayer of Thanksgiving to God, that there is a God that is there to hear it. Think about that. There will be many this Thanksgiving season who will offer up praise to an unknown force because they have no relationship with anybody other than themselves. And so they know in their Americanism that they ought to be thankful for something. And it'll be the first time and last time this year that they will bow their heads and say grace. And there will be that awkward moment because no one knows how to do it. But beloved, you, on the other hand, that walk with Jesus, that acknowledge that you have, you are thankful for a shepherd and you're thankful for a sheepfold and are thankful that you're a sheep because as a sheep you're a priest and you realize that when you pray there is a God that hears And when you attribute thanksgiving to God, that there is a God to receive that thanks. Think about that. We often think of God in the context of someone who answers prayer, but God is also he who receives thanks. (laughs) Oh, I'm so thankful there is someone to be thankful to. Oh, I'm so thankful that this is not just a random accident. I'm I'm so thankful that when something good happens or when there's a providence in my life, there is a God and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I can actually thank for doing on my behalf. And all the blessings that we have in our in our, in our homes, in our families, in our jobs, in, a, in our material goods, and in our health, and all these different things. Oh, that there is a God to actually give attribution to, to say, thank you for doing this. See, the sheep understands that he is a priest. But lastly, he understands that he is not only a priest, but he is also a preacher. Peter said that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Paul told the Corinthians that they ought to be ambassadors for Christ. Beloved, I can think of no better time than a season of thanksgiving to be the greatest evangelist for God, for Jesus. 
Because all you got to do is very publicly declare who you give thanks to. So you, there will be people gathered around a table. There will be people buying turkeys by the droves. Uh, there, there will be gatherings given and thanks given. And yet what an opportunity for a believer to say, my thanks are given to only one, and that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the God of the Bible. My thanks are given to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, my shepherd. What an opportunity to be a preacher. I'm not talking about the office, but rather the occupation of telling others to whom you belong and to whom you owe your thanks. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, you're actually, and, 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 and think about this, you actually get to, with full belief and full experience, offer thanks this week in the name of Jesus Christ. In his name. In his name. We pray by your name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's not a, a traditional sentiment. That's an acknowledgement that our ascent or our, 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 our access to God is provided only through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we not only pray for petitions and ask God to help us and to comfort us and present and feed and all our needs, both spiritually and materially, and we do so in Jesus' name, that we also get the opportunity to offer thanks to him in Jesus' name. Thanks that really mean something. Isn't that amazing? Maybe you're here this morning You say, Pastor Jay, I, I got to be honest with you. I, got, I have some things in my life that I am thankful for, but I don't know who to be thankful to for them. <laughs> I, I, don't, I mean, I, I believe in God. Well, the Bible said the devils believe, the demons believe also. A belief or an acknowledgement of God is not a relationship with him. But the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And beloved, to be born again, to be made a new creature, to be quickened, those that were dead in their trespasses and sins, and to be quickened and to be made alive is the most thankful thing that every person in this room has that knows Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Oh, that you would have opportunity this Thanksgiving to give thanks to him to which it is really due. Jesus, our Savior. Oh, friends, would you be thankful? Would you be thankful for your shepherd, for your sheepfold, and for being a sheep? Heavenly Father, help us. Lord, we pray you would help us to, Lord, have thankful hearts. Lord, help us to express thanksgiving. Lord, help it to come out of our mouths. Or maybe there's one here this morning who has never trusted you as their Savior. Lord, I pray you would help them. Lord, that this Thanksgiving would be their most thankful. Lord, that they would know you in a real and personal way. Lord, that you would save them. And that they would finally meet the God who has provided for all that they have. And they would truly be able to give thanks for him by receiving his son. Lord, help us. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, let's stand together and turn to hymn number. Eight.